consciousness is expansive. It's not just in one space. Think about silly putty and pulling it across, right? And then you put it over something and you can translucently see what's behind it. That's your soul. So at that very moment, you could be living the essence of a life someplace else. I feel karma is a reaction. First it is a reaction, then it turns into action, and then there is a chain of action and reaction. Jay Ray is an intuitive healer who's worked with some of the most influential figures in show business, including other other than Jennifer Lopez. Her clients love her tough talking, no nonsense approach, which usually starts with three simple questions. Where are you going? What are you doing? And how are you going to get there? Uh, She's here to help us discover and tap into our true power. We've had her on the show before because she is a very dear friend. And I think someone's going to even become closer with us as the years go on. The Heal Squad and Better Together are so excited to welcome back our friend, Jay Ray. Hello, my peeps. How are you, my loves? Uh, yeah, we're okay. You know, we're dealing with, with the yes, loss. I and, you know, you and, and I, were, sorry about that. We, yes. you were talking off air about it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's important for a lot of people to hear about, you know, we, when our loved ones pass on and how yes. we, we mourn for them and for ourselves. But you, you had a, a very nice uh, take on it. Well... Number one, when you are in limbo state, when you are dying, and that's what you are, you're dying in, it's a process. It's not something that, you know, when you're in the process of dying, like Maria's mom was, God bless her, it was very painful to be in limbo, to be in that state of knowing that you had to stay here for the ones you love, but then also the ones that you love, you're missing as well, and they're missing you. And it's this it's this energy this pull that starts to happen where the blissfulness of escaping this physical body and going home is probably a feeling that anybody, anybody who's been in an afterlife type situation or has been in a um, near to death experience or that can understand that gravitational pull, that feeling of almost excitedness of almost going home. You know that feeling of going home mm-hmm. and or or if you ever have you ever been truly homesick mm-hmm. where you know that something you're missing something and something is missing you, but you genuinely have to stay where you are because you've been contractually set there. That's what this life really is. It's a contract that we have made to be here to experience the experiences that we have to experience the people the situations whatever they may be but there is a home that once we leave this physical earth and we leave this physical body we go back to and it's a state of bliss happiness there's no there's no pain there's no hurt there's no there's there's no sense of of negativity there's nothing it's just a state of blissfulness think about the most blissful moment in your life they say the way that the way to compare it is falling in love. You know that blissfulness of falling in love where everything, the birds are singing, mm. life is good, the sun is shining, nothing can touch your emotions, nothing can touch your feelings, nothing can touch that feeling of happiness and blissfulness. Well, that's the same part of transitioning, going from this life to the next life. Wow. It's the same process of what falling in love feels like. Yeah serotonin levels go that's why people wake up right before they're about to pass because they're at the highest peak of their serotonins of happiness and blissfulness they're able to say goodbye because they're going home you know it's funny you say that because the doctors will tell you that and the caretakers will say listen they they may come back like right Right. before you know they don't say why you're saying but it's interesting Mm -hmm. that scientifically i know it happened with my dad and yeah you see that you you know with Mm -hmm. Lisa, i could see it in her eyes her eyes opened you know, she yeah, she didn't say anything, but I, yeah, wow. That yeah, makes because a lot the of serotonin sense. levels reach to that pinnacle because the happiness that you feel, that excitement, that adrenaline comes up through because you have to now release yourself from the physical body. So that, that rush comes up in and then it's all of a sudden, whoosh, you're out. And you're gone. And the physical body's left, but the soul is eternal. So now it goes back home. And it goes back into, people call it a pod. People say God. People say all so many different things. I just like to say it's where you've derived from. It's where your soul family came from. It's where you, your soul came from, your spirit, your essence, which really is eternal. The, the, Remember, we're living a thousand different lifetimes within one life. This is not the only life you're living right now, Kevin, whether you know it or not. Yeah, what do you mean by that? So, so the soul is expansive, okay? So it's called linear lives. And it's about how, because our soul is physically here and then this is our conscious state of mind. We're conscious of this life right now. But 
there was an old life he once lived in 1775 or 645 AD, yeah. AD or or you're in the future in, in 2082, you know, and, and you're living this, your soul is in, inhabiting all of these physical beings, all these physical bodies and all these different lifetimes and all these different time, you know, linear times at the very same time. So it's like you starring in a movie, just think about you on a screen and you're starring in every movie and every movie is a different time period in every movie right just think about this you're the star in every movie in the different time periods of every movie and they're all playing at the at, at different times but they're all playing they're all happening you're experiencing all of them and what happens to a lot of people is deja vu you know that deja vu moment yes, yes. Say, oh my god i've been here before i experienced this before oh my god i i could swear i heard that voice before i could swear i heard that name before yeah. oh my god i know this room i recognize that house because that's from another life it's a linear life and that that very moment the two lives are interjecting they're almost transposing over themselves so that split second so that split second you're in both places at once wow. so so when let's say you go into a house and or you, anything you go into a mall and you say wait i've been here before is it the 1980s is there another you could be is it exactly. the 1940 so something crazy. version of yourself that was there before i you know or no, or, or do you no. live the same life over and over i don't think you i don't think you loop the same life i okay. don't think life is groundhog's day i think that you have to come into different lifetimes to experience different experiences but there's something else i'm going to say to you it's going to blow your mind a little bit your essence of who you are right now your soul your spirit because consciousness is expansive it's not just in one space think about silly putty and pulling it across right and then you put it over something and you can translucently see what's behind it that's your soul so at that very moment you could be living the essence of a life someplace else mm. in another time period that maybe hasn't truly ended yet but yet you're now in this life having to experience the experiences you need here i know it's very confusing but but that's called but that's called linear lives. And so that's, that's one of the things I practice in spirituality 101. When I have my classes, I teach people about about linear lives. Wow. So so and Kelsey, you understand the deja vu thing? Because I'm still not clear on. I'm like almost there. So okay, what, give me the because what, I what agree you, with you. I know when I have a deja vu, I'm like this. This is this isn't just a thing. I know I've thing. never been here before. Yes. Mm. I know in my my now life, I've never seen this before. I've never been here before. I've never been to the state. I've never been to the street. I've never rode in this car. I know I've never experienced this person, but yet I can tell you where to make a turn. I can tell you where it's located. I can tell you where the house is sitting. I can tell you if I go up the stairs, I can make a left opposed to a right. I know exactly where the bathroom is. How do I know this? Yeah, how? Right. Yeah. Because somewhere in your in your trajectory of your soul, your spirit has lived there before or has experienced something there before. Okay. Mm. And it just knows. And that's clear cognizance, by the way. It just knows. So that's why when people I say when it ain't over till it's over, it really isn't. Even when you're when you're dead, it's not over. No. You're still living someplace else. Your your soul is still moving. It's still doing what it needs to do. Right. It just is. It's never a, a play. It's never really parked anywhere. You know what's interesting too, Jerry? The more religions I study, yes, they all have. They all say it differently, but they all kind of say the same thing, which I find fascinating. Well, that's an omnist. You know, I think every religion serves its purpose here. You know, but religion, remember, is what religion is and what is religion. It's based on rules, based on someone's right. understanding of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's somebody's perception. And they want you to believe their perception is the only perception you should know and you should follow. Right. Being spiritually advanced or being, being someone who's spiritual is the fact that everything makes sense and everything has value. And nobody should condemn nor deny someone's idea of how they should love or how they should be loved right. in what way and what capacity nobody nobody that's what spirituality really is it doesn't confine you in the way that religion does mm. but it, religion is also very good for people that don't know how to keep themselves in check and needs rules right right yeah. i am a disruptor and i'm a rule breaker it wouldn't make sense for me to be considered to practice Catholicism, right? It doesn't make sense. I knew she was a Catholic. Right? I just am. That's what I am. So therefore, my priests and my nuns didn't know what to do with me. It made sense. 
religion wasn't for me, but I understand the confounds and the understanding of religion and why religion is created. Did you ever have nuns or priests feel your power and kind of yes, know it was more than you just yes. being a smart ass, but like, whoa, wait, this is heavy. Oh, they definitely knew there's something here. She definitely knows. She definitely hears. She wow. definitely sees. There's no doubt. And I had one priest that was the, was the nicest, Father Suarez, and I will never forget. He said, don't ever deny what God has given you. Oh. What God has given me, what God has given you is the same exact thing, except I wear, I stand on the pulpit and I wear this. You may not stand on a pulpit, but you wear you wear love. You do it from love. You could see it. Yeah. And and that's like I said, that's why with, with when people go to psychics or they go to people and they're like, please don't tell me anything bad. Number one, I would never tell you anything bad because it's not my place to. That's number one. I'm not here to teach you a lesson. I'm not here to do that. I'm not I'm not God. But if you come to me and you say, Jay, I'm experiencing this pattern in my life and I'm experiencing this deep hurt pain and I'm and I have a mother who passed and I have a father who passed and I just need to understand the process. I'm your girl. Yeah. I'm your girl. But I'm not here to scare anyone. I'm not here. I don't believe. I only believe that the devil exists where you allow him to exist. Negativity can only exist where you allow him to exist. If you know where you are in life and you are good with who you are and you know that everything you've done and you've done out of love, then you shouldn't fear any of it. You shouldn't fear it um, because you know you've done anything out of love. So therefore, love, it wins all. I want to get into karma. So tell us what karma is and what it isn't. Okay, that's great. So karma is, um, first of all, I feel karma is a reaction. First, it is a reaction, then it turns into action, and then there is a chain of action and reaction. So something rises in the nature, and when that happens, you react to it. So just for example, you get hungry, what you're going to do? You're going to take an action. You're going to react to hunger, and you're going to take an action, and your action is going to be you want to put food or something in your mouth. That's your action. In that action, there are many other actions. Those actions are, you're going to source the food. How you're going to source is another action. What kind of job or work you are going to do and how you are going to earn. Are you going to bag a steel, borrow, or earn that? How you're going to do it? What kind of food? Are you going to eat vegetables? You're going to eat meat you are going to eat, what, what you are going to eat is another aspect of it. Then it is going to depend on your nature. If you are of a purer nature, you will source that food in a purer chain or sequence of actions and then have it. If you are impurer, you may just steal it. You know, so that's your nature. Your, your, your nature is going to define it. So you are walking on the road. There is somebody walking in front of you, drops his wallet. What would be your first reaction? You will just, sir, you dropped your wallet. Here it is. And then I give it to him. You give it to him and he takes it, puts this in the pocket and he doesn't say a word. What you're going to say. He doesn't say a word. He just puts it in the pocket. Not a word. I'd be horrified he didn't say thank you. <laughs> thank you. This is where you just created karma. Because it was happening in the scheme of the universe. There's no fluke. He was walking in front of you. You were behind. He dropped his wallet. You picked it up. Based on your nature, you gave it back to him. If there was somebody else and his nature was, you could have pocketed it. Now, this guy didn't say thanks because... That was his nature. And you expected a thanks. And you were like ridiculous. You know, this guy didn't even say a thanks. And that very moment, you created your ego and your karma around it. And it was, though a good action, but its karmic output was negative because of what you just expected. Wow. Yeah. So that's karma. So karma is, a, in, in other words, when you have an intention, 
you put that intention in motion through an action, very targeted towards a goal, and give your energy to it, it is a complete inevitable karma and is going to have its consequences, result, coming back. Everything is going to happen in that. So that would be absolutely complete karma. Now, there are three layers of karma. One is accumulated layer, which has come to fruition, which has formed your destiny. You can't do much about it. But then there is another accumulated karma, which has not come to destiny point. It is still in the field. You can do something about it. And then there is forward a current karma, whatever you're doing in now, you can do it consciously because that's going to become your future karma or forward paying, as we say, you know, it's going to become that. So it's a cycle. And in this cycle, the biggest culprit is one thing. And if you can eliminate that aspect, then there is no karma done despite doing the karma. And that is that I am the doer. I am doing it. If you are doing it, then you own it. If you own it, you are going to face the consequences of it, good and bad both, because you are the field of karma. So what we are doing right now, if I say, is are we doing it or is it happening? We will probably say we are doing it, right? But in this doing, there is a lot of happening also going on because it depends on five factors. So your intention, your mind, my mind, time, space, space means place, and cosmic mind, they all came together for this to happen. Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened. So it is a happening in which we are taking the credit because of intention. And we can take a little bit of credit, that's fine. And that's where the thing of uh, feeling of gratitude comes in place that was allowed, that all other four factors also came together to do it in this given moment. You know? So this is where the whole uh, karmic thing goes. And karma lives in your subconscious mind and in your chakra energy. Depends on the nature of the karma. Then subconscious mind has a vibrational field in which it does not live as good and bad, right and wrong. But it lives as it is, as been recorded by, say, a video camera. So it lives in there. So it doesn't know the difference. So the vibration of that determines your experience because it's going to connect with the same energy or vibration or the frequency in the subconscious mind of the universe. And then it happens in our life as it is. Then we blame why God is punishing me, why the planets are punishing me, <laughs> why? Because you had put it in the first place in that field and this what's coming out now. So, so do we all have periods where we pay our karmic debts? Because I was saying earlier how you told me I'm I'm in that period where I'm paying karmic debts. And now I know yeah. where I've accumulated them from. It's expectation and ego. Yes. And uh, there are other factors also. But see, the thing is, uh, karmic debt is something, okay, you have lived something with somebody. So just to give you an example, say in your previous life, you had a very bad relationship with your husband and your everything you wanted to do he was the biggest problem he would he didn't let you do that and you inside you you kept on on imbibing this suppose if i was not married my life would have been so great and beautiful and different i made a major mistake by getting married Marriage is the worst thing possible on this planet. Okay, that's your learning. So this learning is in your subconscious. Now you're born in the next life and now you're not getting married and your conscious mind is saying marriage is important. Your parents are saying, hey, you should get married. 
Society is saying you should get married. You want to get married because this life's conditionings are different than what you had learned. Now there's a conflict between your learning and your conscious living here in this life. Who's going to win? You know? So that unless that learning has been turned around, your experience in this lifetime is not going to change. But that's so hard. How do you know what your past life was? You just don't know. But based on your learning, you can know, okay, there is a learning because of this. I'm having this experience of not getting married in this lifetime. You're born with the right to love and be loved, but you have blocked it yourself. When? That is the biggest question. When? We don't know. So even if we don't know when, and we recognize this, that I am responsible for this, not the whole universe and everybody else or my bad parenting or dysfunctional family. Nobody else is responsible. I am responsible. But I want to change this to have this experience of my, this life's learning. And I really want to have it. Then your inner shift starts to come. Then how do you do that? So then you access your subconscious mind consciously. You access your chakra energies, wherever it is stuck. And that's where all the work on, the, the work I was doing with you is miracle of karma clearing, essentially. And the, sound, and the sound vibrations. And the sound vibrations. So when we are born, we are born with, uh, when when universe imprint on, on us, the moment we come out, whole universe imprints on us. So there's all lights, all sounds, all the universal energies, even people standing next to you are all getting in you. Everything is getting in, in uh, imbibed in you. If the light is on, fan is running, the fountain is running, or nurses are talking or whatever, it's all getting into you. This is the first time your senses are receiving information in full swing. And it's going to go and imprint on you. Boom. Now there are 108 sound vibrations in our zone. They get imbibed also in us. And there are, my discovery is that we get affected the most by six to 10 sound frequencies. And I call it as your own sound signature you're born with. And they influence different aspects of your life. So the vibrational field of an experience, so say your love life, the experience of that and its vibrational field is ruled by one sound. So if you know that sound, you identify that sound, and you work with that sound, raise your that vibration is going to create that harmony or that alignment or that manifestation of that aspect of your life. So as I said, you know, we have the, the, the power to really raise or reduce something. Through our negativity, we reduce something. Through our positivity, we raise something. So when we raise it and raise enough in this lifetime through good energy, that experience is bound to happen. It's the law of nature then. I really liked our sound vibration work. And I think that it was cool because basically he'll have you say some sounds and then you connect with one or the other, and then you have to do it twice a day for 20 minutes a day. And I saw such a difference. And I know that you just built an app that can help people find theirs. So I'd love for you to share that really quick before we wrap. Yeah, so the app is uh, A-N-A-N-T, like Tom, A, dot app, Ananta dot app, A-N-A-N-T-A dot app. Ananta means limitless. <laughs> it's, it's on both stores, Google and uh, iStore. It's there. Both the, Apple, the Apple store? Apple store, yeah. Got it. We'll put a link to it in and the Google. description of this episode. Pooja, you'll make sure, obviously. Um, so basically, it's self, self-figure outable. You can go in and find your vibration and do the work yeah, to help exactly. raise your vibration so that you can access the things that you want. I think that's so cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you have to do it for a longer period of time. It's not you do it today and then next four days you don't do anything. You have to continuously do it for a longer period of time. Yeah. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.